Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the second day of UIConf. I'm honored to be here at one of what I think is the best conference uh, iOS co uh, about iOS development that we have in Europe. And this conference is really special to me because UIConf is where I started my speaker career in 2013. And my talk was about bending UIKit to your will. So basically, how to call private API and get away with it. Oh, and by the way, five years later, and we're still getting away with it. <laughs> you can, it's online. You can Google Stipeed speaking, and uh, you'll find it. It's, it's still kind of relevant. It's not yet in Swift, but you'll figure it out. And it might not look like that in the picture, but I was really really nervous. And it took a lot of energy to go up there on stage and, and share, what, share my work. But the feeling you have afterwards is when people approach you is really worth it. But today, I am not here to talk to you about UIKit. We are talking today about something that's much more important to every single one of you, and that is personal branding. Having a successful online identity will open many doors and help you to become better developers and, dare I say it, a better person as a whole. You have a personal brand whether you realize it or not, and whether you work on it or not. I've been working on my professional persona since 2009. And it helped me so tremendously and pushed me forward into places I didn't think I could ever go. And today, I'd like to share some thoughts, stories, and tips how to get started. So everybody knows what brands are, right? The magic, the magic here is I show you an image and you will instantly know what the company is. But you will also have opinions and feelings towards that company. If I show you McDonald's, what comes into your mind? Fast food, unhealthy, ubiquitous. Nike, just do it. Apple, great hardware, loads of money. <laughs> Swift, yes, Swift is a brand and it's a highly successful one in our community. Objective-C doesn't even have a logo. <laughs> but Swift was also created 30 years later at a very different time and age, where marketing and standing out is just so much more important because there is so much more noise. Hell, even security vulnerabilities now have names and logos. Who knows, who knows what that one is? Yes, of course, Heartbleed, the nasty open SSL memory bug. You could like, read memory by specially crafted packages, and there is a company named Synopsys that discovered that issue and created a logo to raise public awareness, but also to get more credit. And we, we need to clear a few things up here. Personal branding is not about being famous. It's about being selectively well-known in the communities you care about and work with. When I first shared the talk title, I got quite the reactions. And I noticed that the name personal brand has a negative connotation. But having a personal brand simply means you are well-known. It doesn't say anything about you as a person. Trump is well known. He has an exceptional, strong personal and corporate brand. People pay money to put his name on buildings. I mean, at least he did so in the past. Uh, Steve Jobs is an extremely strong brand. And while he directed Apple, those two were not the same. The notion of personal branding first popped up in 1997. The concept exists for much longer, though. 
The internet and especially social media made it possible to build a large audience and made the concept more mainstream. And a more modern world might be influencer. But let's, let's put it to a test. Everyone knows who Chris is, right? Uh, he created LLVM and Swift, and more importantly, he did all of that eventually in the open. Now, this is Chris Eithoff, and he founded Objective CIO, Swift Talk, and he also created UIConf, the very conference you are here right now, many years ago. Now, John is also sitting here in the audience, first row, and he is super awesome because he managed to build such a strong following in just over two years, I hope I got that right, by his Swift by Sundell blog. Who knows, who knows who that person is? Yes, but it's not all hands, see? It really depends how long you are already working in the Apple world. If, if, you've, there, if you've been there before Swift, you definitely know him from things like AF networking or NS Hipster. And then, in January 2015, he disappeared. No more tweets, no more open source, no more blogging, no more conferences, no more sharing. So you might think, what happened? And you know, there are companies that make it really easy to stand out as an individual. And then there's companies where there's a lot of red tape, rules, secrecy, and this can also be team-specific. And I'm glad that Matt is back and that he's selling his new book series about Swift. And even with his three-year-long break, he could tap into his strong pool of followers, into his well-known name, to get the courage to quit working at that amazing company, to go indie and make a living by selling books. And notice, notice what I did here. You looked at these people. You didn't look at the name. You only looked at the picture. And you didn't look at a random picture. You looked at one specific chosen picture as their, their avatar. And those people use it consistently and everywhere. Your profile picture is how other people recognize you. The username is secondary. I know you should, you should have a unique username, but it's not always possible. It's also not that important. But the picture, if you change the profile picture, your followers need to reassociate that new picture with your person. And if you already have a strong brand, that's not as critical. But especially if you're only starting out, choose your avatar and stick with it. A good example of that is Dave from iOS Dev Weekly. And he eventually changed his avatar. But because it's part of a weekly email, and you see his picture next to a list of highly relevant content every single week, this transition was really, really easy. Another example is that it doesn't always need to be your face. Uh, Fred Wilson is a, quite a famous venture capitalist, and he uses this image as his visual handle. And it's simple, small, and very recognizable. Anastasia uses a fox. And the best part of it, she drew it herself. This is, this is a great brand. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is like, if everybody realized that, but Felix Krause um, used a different trick. He recognized how good or how, how unique his avatar is. But at some point, he got frustrated with how young he looks. So what he did is he recreated it using the same wall, the same shirt, and the same smile. A few years later, and you can barely see the difference, but it satisfied, it satisfied his wish to look a little more like he does now. Now, you've, been, you've seen a few well-known people, but why would you care? There's quite a few reasons. But let's start with the most obvious one, your career. There is quite a recent survey from the Adler Group about hiring, which found out that around 
85% of all jobs are filled with networking. And two-thirds of all the jobs are not even advertised. Imagine that. And here's a personal story. I got my first job in San Francisco through a personal connection with someone that I knew from Twitter and then subsequently met at a local Cocoa Heads. And he introduced me to someone he was working with, which turned out to be the CEO of a San Francisco startup. And I was in town at WWDC, and we were at a bar, and we got to talk, and an hour later, I basically got a job offer. I got the job offer at 2 a.m. in a bar in San Francisco. And he also mentioned that I should casually come by the next day, which was a seven-hour interview marathon. <laughs> but I did get the job, and I did move to San Francisco, and the job was not even advertised. So I hope that I've convinced you now that this is actually important. Now let's, let's move on to the how. And I, I talked to many successful people, and nobody started out with the goal of, I need to build a personal brand. Most people didn't even think about it. They just enjoy sharing, and they noticed that good things come with it. Still, it does help to give these actions a name and make things more conscious. And no, there is no such thing as a, as a manual for building a personal brand, and cloud is certainly not the answer. <laughs> They're also shutting down. In our modern world, there is a lot of noise. Everybody is posting information and wants to get attention. How do we stand out in the crowd? Have a reason to drive dialogue. In all this sea of gray boxes, be the red box. When I announced my talk title, I got many comments, and one of the best ones was from my friend Javi, who sent me this reaction GIF. And it has the title, <laughs> That's My Strategy. <laughs> now, I'm not so sure if shit posting on the internet will yield the best results. But used in a smart way, it can be part of your brand. Who knows Craig Hockenberry? Oh, there's quite a few hands. And he's the person who wrote the first Twitter client. Back then, it, they didn't even have the word tweet. It was called twit. And he generally shares great content on Twitter. And he also has a second persona, a weird, funny, crazy person. And any time that person speaks, it's all upper caps. So this sometimes really confuses people when they don't know the chock lock rule, but it definitely made people notice and made people talk about him. And it all started out as an April Fool's joke in, in 2008, but I guess the caps lock stuck. And now there's even a website. Their HTML is even better, and he complains how JavaScript is not chock lock compatible because it's case sensitive. And he even managed to get an entry into Urban Dictionary. I mean, how impressive is that? <laughs> By the way, stock, stock images, aren't they just great? Um, what can we learn from Craig? Be authentic. If you have a weird ass humor, embrace it. Embrace your identity, your diversity, your true self. Your personal brand needs your voice with your character, your talents, and your flaws. People want to follow persons that they can identify with, that they can look up to. If you try to fake it, it won't work. So let's, let's talk about a few practical Twitter tips. Number one is be active. Building an audience requires constant effort. I check Twitter almost every day, and I, I try to read through my whole timeline. And if this is too much for you, just follow less people. Be more selective. Engage your audience. If someone pings you, if someone tells you something, react. 
even if it's just a thanks or if it's one of those stupid reaction gifs. Actually, they're the best. Make sure the person knows that you've read their reply and they will interact with you again. And keep it relevant. Understand your audience and post relevant content. To me, that means I share interesting articles about iOS, some open source, and also articles about management and entrepreneurship. I do have opinions about politics and what's happening in the world, but my Twitter account is not the right place for that. And I honestly even unfollow people who post too much noise. And I do share personal details, but I also don't make that the topic of Twitter. I'm, I'm quite careful with that, and I, I only post uh, those things rarely, and people appreciate the focus. Another way how you can combine sharing your personal story while still keeping things relevant for your larger audience is using two accounts. Natasha Murashev gained a large audience with her work on This Week in Swift and also the Troy Swift conference. And eventually, she created a second profile, Natasha the Nomad, to share another part of her story. And everyone who's interested in the more personal part can just follow that account. And people who really just want the technical parts are not alienated. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> Another important rule is uh, no cross-postings. And Dave figured this out on his own. Um, don't use tools that automatically post to another social service. Like, this is usually not the best way to, to share your content. Like, Instagram will copy the hashtags and will cut things up at 140 characters, and it's just not great. And also be careful with buffering. Now, this is like a service where you can automatically post content spread over a few hours. And th these services have a reason to exist. They're, they're great if you're a company, but you're not a company, you're a person. So please don't use uh, Buffly links. If I see a Buffly link, I will probably not engage with that content. Why? Because it's unlikely that the person is on Twitter right now. So my chances are much smaller that I actually get a reply. And I also subconsciously know that this was something from some time ago, even though that's, that's stupid, but it's marked as less relevant. Oh, and don't take yourself too serious. Humor is great. Uh, just be smart about it. There is this great quote by Warren Buffett that it takes 20 years to build a reputation <coughs> and only five minutes to ruin it. So if you think about that, you do things differently. And reputation is a hard topic because I am guilty as well. It's really easy to badmouth products. If you're following me on Twitter, you know that I did that quite a bit, and especially about the state of Apple software ecosystem. Critique is fine, but simply ranting on Twitter does not help anyone. It just makes you look bad. Who wants to hang out with someone that just complains all the time? If you have the feeling that you have to give feedback, at least try to be helpful. I still take the liberty to complain about the state of things, but I also spend hours of writing radars, I even have the shirt, <laughs> actually helping, not just bitching. Behind every product, there are hardworking people. Consider that before you go on to your next rant. And also consider what this does to your personal brand. If you see a person constantly complaining about things, do you really want to be around that person? How big's the chance that he'll complain about you as soon as you're gone? If you talk positively about others, people will connect that with you and also think more positively about you. And remember, you do not have an obligation to reply. If a conversation is becoming negative or destructive, just leave. Now notice how I mostly mentioned Twitter so far. 
And I really love that social network as a news alternative and how to get opinions, ideas, and feedback. But it's not the only way how to build a network. There are many ways, both online and offline, to get to know new people and share ideas. Before I went to iOS conferences, I went to our local Coco Heads in Vienna. And Coco Heads is where I gave my first lightning talk. And this helped me to eventually get the courage to submit a lightning talk to another conference, and then eventually a full talk at UIConf. And since you are all here, you're already doing a great job. Also use the time to talk to people. The breaks and the parties and the unconference are the most important network time. You don't need to go to all the talks. It's completely fine to skip one when you are in an interesting conversation. Talks are recorded, but still thanks for being here. <laughs> now, why do I mix up personal brand and being an introvert? Because studies prove that in the engineering field, there are more introverts than in the general population. And because it's often harder for these people to get the word out, and lastly, because I also identify as an introvert. And I know in our society, being an introvert is often considered bad. People might think of shy, doesn't like people, but that's really wrong. Introvertism or extrovertism is mostly just about where you get your energy from. For me, social interactions drain my energy, and I'm, I recharge when I'm at home by myself. OK, I might tolerate the cat, but even that is sometimes tough. The important factor, though, is that you can work on that. Learn about yourself and know when you have too much. It's always OK to leave. There's no obligation to be there for the entire event. Or maybe you focus more on online interaction. For me, Twitter is full of people, but it's fun, it's not energy draining, because I'm in control, and I can put my phone away anytime I want, at least in theory. <laughs> now, starting a conversation is not always easy. But context is important. Everyone here at this conference is there to meet new people, not only are the talks recorded? They are live streamed. Hello, live stream. <laughs> and the stream is free. Why would you go there if not to meet people? You can literally go to anyone here in this room, introduce yourself, and ask, hey, what app are you working on? I look at the name badge and reference the topic that's written on here. Maybe you want to talk about cats. <laughs> Get people talking about them. And one trick, there's many tricks, but one trick is to simply repeat the last three words. The last three words? Yes. You've got to be slightly savvy about this one, but it's surprisingly effective. Surprisingly effective? Yes, it is. <laughs> is it? Yes. Research shows repetition is even effective in negotiations. Oh, don't be afraid to move on. <laughs> Simply say that it was nice to meet you, and you want to you walk around the room a little bit. <laughs> to be interesting, be interested. Don't just talk at people, talk with people. Be interested in their story. Take their views into account. Pay attention. Remember their name. I know we're all bad at this, but you have badges. They Carnegie wrote a really famous book about how to win friends and influence people. And it really can help you to become better at conversations. Now, story time. 
or pitch time. <laughs> I started my company in a period where I was actually waiting for my visa to move to the US. There were people in my network. I was bored. There were people in my network selling code for money. And I found this company business, this component business, really interesting. So I did share my thoughts and progress with my peers. And when it was finally ready to be called a 1-0, I know it's hard to call things a 1-0, my whole marketing was making a quick website and doing an announcement tweet, like total investment zero. There were enough people on Twitter knowing me, my blog, my open source work, my contributions, to help me and spread the word. And I sold licenses of my PDF framework within the first week. And notice how I have to also show the company name and the product name here, because we are not Coca-Cola yet. Not Coca-Cola famous yet, but one step at a time. What makes you stand out? The number one thing we are all selling is ourselves. If I won't buy you, I won't buy everything that's behind you. People buy people. You want other people to choose you, to hire you, to promote you, to recommend you, to date you, to marry you. What are you passionate about? What excites you? What are things you truly enjoy? What are your core beliefs? What are your top strengths? What do others say about you? Ask around. You may have strengths you're unaware of, or talents that you need to put emphasis on so people know they exist. What's your story? If I ask you to summarize in a two-minute little story what makes you, you, what would you say? Think about that. I might do something like, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. I'm an iOS developer. I'm gay. I'm an introvert. I'm an only child. I'm a gym freak. And I'm one of the poor people who still have to write Objective-C for a living. <laughs> create value. Create good content. Have a reason to speak. There are so many ways how you can do this. You can write blog posts, you can update your website, you can contribute to open source or make your own. You can be guest at a podcast or you can just start your own. You can be funny or crazy on social media. You can speak at a meetup or a conference or you can just attend a conference. Start, sorry, start with what's easiest for you and work your way out of the comfort zone. For me, speaking still makes my heart beat heavy, harder, but it does get easier every single time. And it's great because it forces you to dig deeper into a topic that you'd normally ever do. And lastly, a word of warning. Don't try too hard. Most rich people didn't start out poor and then with the goal of just getting rich. Like, they started out poor and had the goal of building something great. And the side effect was that they got rich. That's also true for how you grow your network, your reputation, your personal brand. Don't make it the goal. It doesn't work like that. Take it as an encouragement to share, not as the only reason to do all of these things. Remember that being authentic is important. People will feel when you try too hard, when you don't really care about the work, but only see it as a means to an end. Personal branding is not a me, me, me activity. It's about giving to others. It's about sharing. And have patience, because building an audience takes time. You can't grow your network overnight. This is a process that takes your whole life. Somebody at the speaker dinner yesterday told me that he got 150 new followers after his talk. And how amazing is that? But this is, not, this is an 
unexpected surprise. This is not how he did the talk. This is not why he spent countless hours preparing and thinking about this presentation. To recap, we talked about the importance of your avatar. We talked about what makes you stand out. We talked about being focused on social networks. We talked about being an introvert and conversation skills. Conversation skills? We talked about reputation and how to treat others. We talked about ways to build a network. And we talked about sharing. And now, go out and be the red box. Thank you.